Hello, my name is Hafsat Abiola Costello, and I'm the 2016 recipient of the Goy Peace Award. I'm sending you this message of gratitude and of my deepest appreciation to be recognized by the Goy Peace Foundation. I've always felt in my heart, I've always felt in my soul, that in the way that a baby is born with its umbilical cord connected and that nurtures the baby, that I have a kind of spiritual umbilical cord that connects me to the Supreme Being. And it is one of the big reasons that I, I make the decisions that I make. Because every morning when I wake up, I feel it. I feel its presence and I feel the connection. And it makes me so happy. I always know that I'm not alone. I always know that the Supreme Being watches and that the Supreme Being is concerned that my spirit goes through life and comes through life better than how it was sent into the world. I have a feeling that my spirit has some questions that my life's journey is supposed to help me answer and that when I'm done, that those, the way in which those questions are answered helps the entire universe and the collection of all energy and all spirit in the universe. And, and so I mustn't, I must guard always that spiritual connection. So whenever I have a decision to make in my life, I always think, if you take this decision, is there any chance that I would, you could lose that connection? And, and even though you might not lose that connection, that you might not feel it as clearly and as compellingly as you do. And if the answer is yes, no matter what material rewards have been offered, I know that I cannot negotiate this very priceless, this very treasured connection that I feel to the Creator. And I know that every human being has this connection as well. And in some way, my work as well is to create that safe space so that people can hear their own internal connection. I feel if we all are connected to that, um, um, to that spiritual creator, everything becomes clear. The fact that we are one, the fact that we must support each other, the fact that we lose nothing by sharing with each other, all of this becomes so clear. And then we just naturally express that into the, in the world. I'm from a continent that the world says is the poorest, and yet when I'm in Africa, I don't feel that I'm in the poorest place on earth. When I've traveled to other places and I fly back into Nigeria, which is my country, as the plane lands and I come out of the airport, always I have somebody at the airport that looks at me and says, welcome home, sister. Usually, when I look at this person, I smile in my heart because I don't even know this person, but this person knows enough that I am his sister. And, and he recognizes me, and I also greet him. I say, how has everything been at home, my brother or my, other, my sister? And we talk in this way. This is just the way we relate over there. When my father was growing up, he, wouldn't, he, didn't, have a, he didn't come from a wealthy home. But you, sometimes he would have um, a little bit of money from his parents, and he would run to school, and he would say to his classmates, I have this amount of money, and during lunchtime, you will join me to eat. You will join me to eat. By the time it's lunchtime, he has invited so many people. Then they all go to the woman that is cooking and brings the food, and he'll say, I have this amount of money, and these people are joining me to eat. And the woman will look at my dad, and she'll wonder, how is she going to feed all these people with this money? But somehow, she manages to feed all of them. And somehow, whatever she gives my father is enough for all of them. And this story was not told to me by my dad. My father died fighting for democracy in Nigeria. Both my parents died in this way. But now I work in the state of our ancestral home. And my father's classmate, who is in his 70s now, when I started my job there, he came and he said, this was how your father was. And I smiled and I said to him, 
and he never changed. My father never changed. Till the day he died, he was sharing and giving. And so I have been deeply blessed by his example. And now I go into the world and see how can I help others? How can I share? I always feel so wealthy in all the things I can give. You should see my smile and you will see it a lot when I'm in Japan. And just even my quiet, which is one of my treasures that I give to others. I like to be with others and just to listen to them and listen to the beauty of their spirit, of their soul. I think that these things that we have are priceless and the world needs to recognize them. Let us together lift up these things that the world doesn't pay attention to, the way in which we can share and we can listen to each other and allow the greatness of each person to emerge. It is in this way that we make the world a better place.